Oh, I can say that now. It's handy. Where did you just store that? Oh, hang on, what's that? It looked like a set of plans. With Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineer's drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Because the sisters thought he was renovating it. I didn't find the sisters. So I wonder if they're back now. <laughs> I could just show you the plans. Hi. Hi. Could I ask? Never mind that. Help poor Mr. Bronson. I refuse to help him. Okay then. I'll do this the old-fashioned way. Here. Here. Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, oh, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Also, he's a confidence trickster. Me now, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters. Especially confident ones. <laughs> Flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle, eject. Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat! <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Nina isn't crazy; she's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, yeah as a bed bug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina of the Lock. Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh. How about now? Ooh. When George was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to London. It was a long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar Stone at the British Museum. Hmm. Someone sneezed somewhere. The two Japanese girls were inexplicably amused by something. When did they say that we're in Fra uh, Paris? Bonjour. I wonder if you could help me. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, it also the stone. It was a stone identical in size and style to the Coyote stone. However, this stone bore the image of a jaguar. There was nothing very useful in my bag, just a single hair clip. The display case contained a couple of vases. The carving looked Central or South American in style, perhaps Aztec. I 
I doubted I could sneak this enormous stone out <laughs> under my jacket. Why not? Perhaps I'm a Philistine, but old vases bore me. I can stop back and put the other light in his shorts for the. <laughs> can I help you, miss? All right, governor. Have you ever heard of an English sea captain called El Draco? El Draco? Not a very English name. I think that's what the Spanish would have called him. It was about the time of the conquistadors. 16th century. Oh, I know. That's what the Spanish called Sir Francis Drake. Francis Drake? Have you got anything here that belonged to him? Indeed, miss. We have a couple of artifacts he brought back from one of his journeys. I didn't think the museum attendant would be interested in a hair group. <laughs> Not even a cute one like this. What can you tell me about that stone with the jaguar on it? The so-called jaguar stone was brought back from the Americas by Sir Francis Drake and presented, along with the more famous scrying mirror, to John Dee. What's this scrying mirror? It's a little square of polished obsidian. Mine it is. And what does it do? Well, it's a bit like a crystal ball, except flat and black. And you can't see anything in it. Old man D had a psychic who reckoned he could speak to the angels through it. I think he was taking D for a ride himself. <laughs> the old loony didn't like the stone, though. Reckoned it was tainted by the devil. Come along, miss. I'll show you the mirror. There. John D's famous crying mirror. Given to him by Francis Drake. Do you know if this mirror has any relevance to Tezcatlipoca? Who? Tizetlik. Tizetlik. I can't even say it. Ah, oh, there's someone here who'll be able to help you better than me. Are uh, you? This young lady has some questions to ask, Professor. I think she's from France. Professor Rubier. Eh? What? You two know each other, do you? Uh, excuse me, the telephone. We meet again. Mademoiselle? France, eh? Yes, I believe that's where you live, Professor. I have a house there, on the outskirts of Paris, but I haven't been back for many months. What can you tell me about the Jaguar stone, Professor? It's obsidian, from the Chichen Itza region. Professor Oubier, your taxi's here. If you'll excuse me, I have some urgent business to attend to at the docks. Can you answer me some questions about the Jaguar stone? Certainly, miss. If you just step this way. Uh. It's gone. Some sods are pinched it. Half inched? Stolen it, miss. Pinched. Never mind. A silent alarm will have been tripped. I'm afraid nobody can leave until our crack security team gets here. How long will that take? It could be a while. <laughs> the thief could be miles away by then. Don't you worry about that, miss. Just don't try to leave. It was too much of a coincidence that Oubier showed up and the stone promptly disappeared. I didn't have time for that crack security team to finish their tea. I had to get after him. It was a small key intended for a small lock. All that was left inside the cabinet was a card describing the missing stone. It would probably be less suspicious if I kept away from the empty case. It was a woven wall hanging with a South American design. Hmm. Excuse me, miss. Please don't touch the exhibits. I wonder what I, if I can open 
one of the other cabinets. The cabinet contained a dagger decorated with Mayan designs. The cabinet was locked. The key unlocked the case. It was an obsidian dagger, thin and razor sharp. I just rob the museum. <laughs> What's in this one? It was the obsidian mirror which Drake had given to John D. The cabinet was locked. Oh, hang on a minute. I don't think. Uh, I need the key again. I locked the case again and took the key. The key didn't fit this lock. Oh, uh, can I use that? That's the kind of thing Georges would do, not me. <coughs> I didn't need to make a call. Uh, well, what do we do now? I'm sorry, miss, but I shall have to ask you to stay. Oh, but surely you don't suspect me of stealing the stone? No, but you will have to make a statement to the police. You're a witness. Ow. Take a look at this. What are you doing with that? Just looking. What was it used for? It's a sacrificial dagger. And I'd feel a lot happier if you put it down. I didn't steal the stone. I was nowhere near it. So who do you suppose did steal it? Uh, what was him? It must have been Oubillé. Oh, begging your pardon, but he's a man of letters, a professor. So was Moriarty. Man of letters or not, he's your culprit. Look at this. The thief left this key in the cabinet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That makes the theft an inside job, right? Oh dear. In other words, the thief was Professor Oubidi. Well, let's leave that for the police to decide, shall we? I better phone them right away. <clears throat> I wonder if I can now open this. Hello? I knew I had nothing to worry about if the police were called. Yes, hello. But I had to catch up with Oubillé, and fast. The doors were securely locked. Uh. The doors were sec The dagger might leave or open the doors, but I wasn't going anywhere until I knew where Oubillé had gone. The doors... Well, he went to the docks. You'll have to be quick, miss. I'm on the phone. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubillé has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo, Oops. an exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess. Thanks. Now I know where he's gone.
I leave the handle open with the thin dagger. <laughs> 